I am going to discuss about structural unit in an embedded processor. So basically an embedded processor is designed for an embedded application while the normal processors can be used for any application. The embedded processors are basically designed to handle real-time applications. Uh, the basic functional blocks of an embedded processor are shown in the PPT. Okay, so basically it consists of uh, an ALU, a floating point processing unit and an atomic operation unit. These are the three execution units of an embedded processor. ALU can do any kind of uh, arithmetic logical operations while the floating point operating unit basically operates with the floating point data and the atomic operation unit is basically uh, will execute the instructions when a large instruction is uh, split into smaller submodules and it is executed by the processor and uh, for executing it requires a set of general purpose registers for ALU it uses application register set where a set of uh, general purpose registers are used for processing some intermediate data. And uh, for floating point processing unit, you have a separate floating point register set. And uh, another system register set is used for uh, basically the system operations. And um, some embedded process might have advanced processing units like uh, graphics processing, etc. That may be present based on the application for which the embedded processor is used. So some add-on features will be there in the embedded uh, processor by adding some advanced processing units in the architecture and um, as far as the instruction processing um, basically the instructions are stored in an external memory and are fetched with, um, with the help of the address bus and data bus the once the instructions are fetched the instructions are stored in an instruction queue. The instruction queue works in a manner like a FIFO that is first in the first in first out queue. So it has some uh, six, uh, six memory locations where the six instructions can be stored in the queue at any instant of time and one instruction at a time enters the instruction register where the instruction execution starts. So once the instruction is uh, executed the, uh, with the help of instruction decoder, the control signals required for the instruction execution are generated by the control unit. For generating the control signals, the instruction decoder gives the sufficient information to the control unit. And uh, some of the important blocks present in the architecture are your stack pointer and program counter. The basic use of stack pointer is whenever an interrupt occurs, the execution of the program stops with the execution of the current instruction and the context switches over to the interrupt service routine. While in that case, the temporary data that is stored in the register set cache memory and other data must be stored in a some memory. For that stack pointer is going to point the most recent entry in the stack memory where all the temporary data will be stored during the interrupt service routine execution. Once the interrupt service routine is executed, all the data from the stack memory are fetched and are stored in the on chip units of the embedded processor and one more important block is program counter it contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched from the external memory to the instruction queue 